Alright guys, I'm gonna try shifting to movie reviews and explanations now because it beats having to play a 10 hour game and to structure down to 9 minutes. Plus I also have med school to attend to. Alright, today we're gonna be taking a look at one of DC Comics movies, The Batman. No wait. Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Alongside working with the video game industry and on magnificent projects like Cyberpunk 2077, don't worry Keanu, it wasn't your fault, he starred in Constantine, an adaptation on the DC comic character John Constantine and also his first live action counterpart before Matt Ryans came into the works. He's also the guy who portrays Edward Kenway in Assassin's Creed 4 and on which I have made several videos. Do check those out if you guys want. The movie actually did surprisingly well with a box office of 230 million dollars and with an audience score of 72 percent on rotten tomatoes which is decent enough what's particularly interesting about this movie are the cast members we have rachel weiss who you might recognize from the first two mummy movies and from the latest black widow movie we then have jimon hounsu who also stars in guardians of the galaxy as korat tilda swinton who appears as the ancient one in doctor strange and shia labeouf from the transformers movies the rest of the cast I don't recognize, so we're not gonna talk about them. Oh, we also have Peter Stormare from Prison Break. Yeah, moving on. The movie starts off with a made-up quote talking about the Spear of Destiny which seems to give some sort of power to anyone who possesses it. But it has been missing since the Second World War. Maybe in this universe they used the Spear to make the nuclear bomb, who knows. We then jump to a location in Mexico with what seems to be a demolished church and two guys are collecting scraps when suddenly one of them discovers something wrapped up in a cloth with a Nazi symbol on it, which you could have guessed by now is the Spear of Destiny. Apparently whenever there is like a mythical superpowered object, the writers always give them Nazis. The guy then takes hold of the spear which sort of looks more like a dagger and gets possessed by it. What's the point of holding the fate of the world in your hands if you're gonna be possessed by it? He also gets superpowers because moments later a car runs into him and he's unscratched. Instead he hops over like Mario and goes to search for his peach. Call an ambulance but not for me. <laughs> the title card looks very plain considering it's a movie about angels and demons. We then open up in an apartment in Los Angeles, roughly translating to the angels, get it? <laughs> the director is being clever and ironic as soon after we find out that one of the residents living there is possessed by a demon. Hmm, I see what you did there, Francis Lawrence. Then we are introduced to our main man Constantine, arriving in a cab and very slowly dropping a cigarette. So cool. But you know what's not cool? Him being called here, because his friend who happens to be a priest could not exercise the demon, which sounds absurd to me because if you look at the time of the discovery of the demonic entity in the house and the time it took for Constantine to arrive, it seems like only a few minutes have passed, so it looks like the, this priest is just lazy. And later we do get to find out that he is an alcoholic, so yeah, you can tell that even Constantine is tired of the shit. He then makes his way to the demon's apartment with an eviction notice. The sucker didn't pay his rent and now he's pissed. Give me rent! Constantine then proceeds to exercise the demon in the most erotic way possible. The demon also speaks like Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. John then proceeds to trap the demon in a mirror and throw it on Shia LaBeouf's car. I'm guessing this is his origins as to how he found Bumblebee later. And I'm gonna skip the necessary parts now because uh, there is a lot of talking in this movie. We then jump to a woman named Angela who is a detective confessing at a confessional about her job and how she has killed people. She has a dream where she sees her twin sister jump off the roof of a hospital building and kill herself. The dream turns out to be true. We then switch back to Constantine where we find out that he has several lung carcinomas meaning late stage lung cancer because of smoking too much and now he's going to die. But he is unbothered and does not care because he's already hopeless and depressed and this is where our sponsor comes in, better help. Just kidding, I don't have that large of an audience to get sponsored, <laughs> or do I?
We also get some story exposition here, finding out that earlier the demon that possessed the girl in the apartment was a soldier demon of hell that was trying to escape, which is impossible according to some deep movie lore. So Constantine decides to ask Gabriel for help, and guess what? Detective Angela is present there as well, pops up right behind John. She's there to ask for her sister's Catholic funeral while John's there to ask if he can go to heaven because he's been a good boy. And of course, both are denied for what they want. In the next scene, we see the same priest from the apartment erotically touching some newspapers whilst having an orgasm and suddenly Isabel's name comes up in one of the newspapers. We then come to our first fight scene at the gas station where John fights a demon that awfully resembles a Decepticon from a Michael Bay film. But instead of turning Turning into a plane, it turns into a collection of snakes and bugs. It's not much of a fight scene because a car runs it over and it dies. Okay. Infuriated, John makes his way towards Midnight. Papa Midnight, who is a nightclub owner where different entities called as half-breeds reside. If you don't know what that is, they are basically a mixture of humans and angels or demons that live on earth. How they came to be, I do not know. They just exist. John wants to sit in Midnight's special chair, but he refuses because he does not want to choose sides between the demons and angels and thus wants to stay neutral. Their conversation is interrupted by Balthazar. Okay, calm down buddy, <laughs> come on. Not getting any help from Midnight, he goes back to his apartment. There's this one scene where he traps a spider in a glass jar and exhales his smoke into it, saying welcome to my world. Which kind of seems very salty of John, considering he did this to his own life while he forced the spider. Now, you could say that it's a metaphor for John's life, but I just think he's being salty here. He then gets a knock on his door, and it turns out to be Angela, who earlier, while rewatching a security footage, saw her sister say John's name before jumping off, and now has come to his apartment asking for his help. John, of course, being the salty boy as he is, refuses to help her, but after a whole demon army comes, after Angela, he agrees to help her. They go to her apartment to perform a ritual to enter hell. And to do it, John must sit with his feet submerged in a bowl of water and have a stare down with the cat. He literally just sits there like a crazy person while holding the cat's head. At least take your shoes off him. <sighs> Anyways, he enters hell and grabs Isabel's patient band and oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Isabel also has the same marking as that Mexican guy with the Spear of Destiny, so I'm guessing that she like felt the impending doom that is about to come and has to die in order to stop it and since suicide is a sin, she is sent to hell. John then uses a glass ball to come back to the main world. They don't explain what that glass ball is or how he got it, it's, it's just there. Maybe you bought it like you buy bus tickets and the cat was the conductor. Who knows? We then switch to the priest again and see that he is investigating Isabel's corpse. His head is boiling while he is doing it, which is actually quite the funny sight. But then everything goes wrong and a symbol appears. He gets overwhelmed with strange voices and to drown them out he needs to drink alcohol. Hence why he's an alcoholic. Balthazar walks in to see the show. You see now the priest has become possessed by something, probably a side effect of seeing the symbol. He's actually drowning himself in alcohol but it looks like he is not drinking it. Eventually he dies. Not before mutilating his hand in the form of that symbol. During this, John tells some more expositional stuff to Angela. We get to find out that as a child, he could see demons and try to commit suicide and died for like two minutes. And this is the reason why he has been damned to hell and why previously he goes to Gabriel to ask if he is going to heaven. They soon get the call about the priest and make their way over there, where John just blatantly contaminates the crime scene and none of the police officers stop him. Like what the hell? Fast forward we get to find out that the son of the devil is trying to crawl his way out of hell and another one of John's friend dies. His name is Beeman and dies by bees. Angela then wants to go to hell too because she feels like she betrayed her sister. When they were young as both could see ghosts back then until Angela just stopped believing that she could see them. She goes to hell and back and finds out that Balthazar was the one who killed Beeman. 
What's odd here is that why would he drop his coin? It seems out of character for him to do so. Like, whenever he's on screen, he is fiddling with that coin, but suddenly drops it when it's convenient to the plot. So they gear up and make their way to kill Balthazar who dies almost immediately and Angela gets kidnapped and taken to the same place where her sister died. John convinces Papa Midnight to allow him to use the chair and we find out that there is a whole army of half-breed demons waiting along with the Mexican guy with the spear of destiny waiting at Angela's location. So John along with his sidekick Chaz gear up again and fight hordes of half-breeds to make their way to Angela who is now possessed by the son of the devil. John and Chaz manage to suppress him. Chaz dies in a very dull way and John finds out that it's gay Gabriel that wants the son of Satan to wreak havoc on earth. He blows John into oblivion. Defeated, John kills himself. The end. Just kidding, the Satan himself shows up to collect John's soul but John tells him that Gabriel is trying to bring his son into this world with the spear of destiny which pisses him off so he sends his son back and burns Gabriel's wings. He then goes back to collect John's soul who then asks him to release Isabel to which he agrees to. He starts to bring John back to hell but is stopped as he sacrificed his life for the life of another hence he gains entry into heaven. This scene was particularly funny to me as John pulls up a middle finger while he is being pulled to heaven which is considered a sin. And what's more funny is that the Satan himself pulls the carcinomas out of John to let him live so that he does not enter heaven. So John survives, Angela survives and Chaz turns out to be a half-breed angel so everyone gets a happy ending. Uh, yeah, that's it. There are some things about the movie that just seemed off to me. For stars, the movie does not follow the comic version of Constantine, who is actually British and lives in London. Whereas here, they change it to a complete American version of it, along with some new added characters like Balthazar, whose whole sole purpose was to do nothing but get his ass beat, which is not that bad, but could have been improved more. The story is mostly told by the characters through conversations, and there's not really anything interesting about that. Just a typical story of a demon trying to escape hell and take over the earth and they stretched it out to two hours. The only interesting parts for me in the movie were the beginning exorcism, the fight with the bug demon, the fight with Balthazar and the final showdown. Other than that, I just went through the whole movie half asleep. The relationship between the two main characters was kind of meh throughout the movie. There are like awkward scenes between the two where it obviously showed that Angela has a thing for John, but it goes nowhere. The character developments are meh too. John just stays the same throughout the whole movie. The only one who goes through a major character development is Angela, who throughout her whole life struggled with her psychic gifts, but once her sister died, she comes to terms with them and accepts them going as far as to hell to see what her sister is up to. The twist of Gabriel being the main antagonist was not that great either. He literally wears a tux and has those red eyes that scream villain. As for the Satan himself, I honestly think they tried to make his character more like the Joker wearing a white tux with tar oozing out of his feet. He looks like someone who fell into an oil tanker. All in all, the movie is not that bad if you play it on two times speed. The few action sequences that it has are quite enjoyable. Keanu Reeves is a badass and if you're not one of those comic book nerds then you will certainly enjoy this movie too. And if you are a comic book nerd then you'll be glad to know that this movie is DC canon now. Yep. It's part of the actual DC Universe, so we might see Keanu again in the future Justice League movies too.